ঠাকরে সাহেব প্রেসিডেন্ট অফ ইনস্টিটিউট অফ ইঞ্জিনিয়ার্স ইঞ্জিনিয়ার সন্দীপ কুমার দেব ভাইস প্রেসিডেন্ট ডক্টর জি রঙ্গনাথ সিং চেয়ারম্যান অফ কাটে ইনস্টিটিউশন অফ ইঞ্জিনিয়ার প্রফেসর সুধীর কুমার কালা ইলেকট্রিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ডিভিশন বোর্ড চেয়ারম্যান ডক্টর পি কে মুখোপাধ্যায় চেয়ারম্যান প্রফেসর সুবিমল রয় বর্মন কনভিনার অফ ইলেকট্রিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ডিভিশন অ্যান্ড সাব কমিটি ওয়েস্ট বেঙ্গল স্টেট সেন্টার ডক্টর রাজু বসাক অনারি সেক্রেটারি অ্যান্ড দি প্যানেল স্পিকার ডক্টর মার্তা জুরেকা মোটরকা সাইন্টিস্ট ইনস্টিটিউশন অফ সাস্টেনেবল টেকনোলজিস ইন র্যান্ডাম ডিপার্টমেন্ট র্যান্ডাম ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ কন্ট্রোল সিস্টেম প্রফেসর অশোক কুমার পাল ইলেকট্রিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ডিপার্টমেন্ট টেকনো ইউনিভার্সিটি past and present council members of the institution and the distinguished corporate members ladies and gentlemen it is indeed my great pleasure and honor to be speaking here today in the webinar on new technologies and renewable energy based electromobility organized by the electrical engineering division of west bengal state center the institution of engineers india being the chairman of west bengal state center iii it's my privilege to address the gathering of eminent engineers and technologists on this occasion let me extend a warm welcome to you all and especially our panel speakers corporate members distinguished distinguished guests the staff of iii and my beloved students and other dignitaries Today's seminar theme is electro mobility which is essential for climate protection because it avoids tall pipe emissions depending on the degree of electrification and electric vehicle equipped with semiconductor component is much more co2 efficient than a car with an internal combustion engine however the full turn around can only be achieved in combination with renewable energy is to make electrical vehicle run zero emissions that's why efficient renewable energy generation is at least as important as the development of electrical vehicle itself currently transmission transport emissions are the fastest growing source for global co2 emissions and are held responsible for the greenhouse effect and global warming 75% of transport emissions will emerge from road vehicles worldwide in 2030 low and zero carbon electromobility concepts are needed to break this development semiconductors and microelectronics come into the play as an essential part for the electro electrification of vehicles according to iea international energy agency electric car sales more than double to 6.6 million in 2021 representing close to 9% of the global car market and more than the tripling near market share from two years earlier they estimate there are now around 16 million electric electric cars on the road worldwide consuming roughly 30 terawatt hour of electricity per year the equivalent of all the electricity generated in ireland Power semiconductors play a key role in green mobility and zero emissions. India, being a large country with huge population and several energy-related challenges, now faces a very unique situation where managing the energy transition process without halting the electric electronic development process becomes the highlights of its policies. Today, we have a good number of panelists who are distinguished personalities in the field. let us educate ourselves on the theme and explore how this can help us in our comfort living thank you sir and welcome once again thank you dr nirmal das so <clears throat> for the welcome address i request now dr g ranganath chairman committee for the advancement of technology and engineering to give the to give his address dr ranganath are you there Dr. Ranganath is not here, sir. Dr. Ranganath is not there. Okay, so we'll go to the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go to the next speaker. Next speaker. Next address. By okay, I request Professor Dr. S. K. Challa, Chairman, Electrical Engineering Division. I feel he is also not there. Sir, Chairman is not in India now. He is out of country. 
okay okay so okay due to the time difference okay okay so uh, okay, now okay then we can go to for the presidential address i request dr h o thakare president iei to give the presidential address thank you sir good evening all eminent speaker of the session dr martha zurek mortaka scientist institute for sustainable technology in random in the department of control systems dr uh, nirmal das chairman west bengal state center dr raju basak honorary secretary west bengal state center dr p k mukhopadhyay chairman electrical engineering division sub committee of west bengal state center professor asok kumar paul professor electrical engineering department techno india university dr sabimal re barman convener electrical engineering division sub committee west bengal state center my council colleagues committee members of west bengal state center ia staff attendees and my student friends i consider it a great opportunity for all of us to be a part of this technical webinar on new technology and renewable energy based electro mobility being organized today by west bengal state center under the aegis of electrical engineering division board the effort of the institution has always been to keep its members informed and abreast about the latest engineering and technological developments occurring in national and international arena through organizing technical events on a regular basis involving eminent professional and practitioners over the last 100 years of existence the institution has provided valuable suggestions and policy inputs to the policy makers contributing to the national growth today's topic new technologies and renewable energy based electro mobility is indeed very interesting and emerging nowadays e vehicles are gaining popularity because not only the running cost is lower than the conventional vehicles running on fossil fuel but also it is environment friendly they are practically zero emission and running the vehicle does not cause any pollution they have an electrical motor instead of an internal combustion engine electrical vehicles emit no exhaust from a tailpipe which means that unlike traditional vehicles they don't form carbon dioxide ozone and particular and various particulate pollution into the air we breathe electrical vehicles that is evs which is generally called as are one of the most promising technologies for reducing emission in global transportation but the benefits they bring depend on the provenance of the power they run on today too few evs are powered by renewable energy for them to be a truly green option this has to change the next step to improve the performance of e vehicles is to use renewable energy by by implementing renewable energy within an ev fleet infrastructure business and cities can further reduce pollution and their overall carbon footprint by lowering greenhouse gas emission from both the vehicles and the power plants today we are fortunate to have among us dr martha zurek motor club who will enlighten us further on various aspects of e mobility and use of renewable energy i wish the webinar a grand success thank you okay thank you dr hemant thank you dr hemant for the presidential address uh, okay i am request the address by the vice president iei mr sundeep kumar dev mr sundeep is there dr raju can you hello mr sundeep kumar dev i think uh, he is not there okay uh, not there okay 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 we'll go to the we'll go to we'll go to the state wait and go to the expert lecture so uh, so today today our expert lecture is by dr martka jurek murtka she is from she is from radom poland martka jurek murtka is currently a young researcher who is works she works as a specialist in the institute of sustainable technology at radom in the department of control system the institute belongs to the third largest research network in europe called lucas sic research network she obtained her doctorate degree at the faculty of transport electrical engineering and computer science at the university of technology and humanities kazimierz ulaski in radom 
in the field of electrical engineering. She is an Erasmus PhD student at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering at the University of Ljubljana in the Slovenia. She is a member of Majovia ICT cluster, the Police Association of Electrical Engineers, and a member of Export Board of European Commission and the National Center for, the, for Research and Development in Poland. She is also a member of the Organizing Committee of International Conferences in Poland and many conferences in India. Her scientific interest includes, among other, electromobility, renewable energy, power electronics converter for electromobility, renewable energy sources, minimizing electromagnetic disturbance generated by the power electronic converters, hydrogen power cell, fuel cell technology. At present, she is working in an innovative solution related to the use of thermoelectric generators for the production of electricity from the waste heat. She is an author and co-author of over 25 publications in English and in Polish language, Astes Journal, Electro Inform, Springer, and also co-author of four patents. She, she has participated in many national international conference seminar and mainly organized in Asia. So with this brief introduction, and this is a useful topic for our country, and we are, I'm sure that okay from our lecture, all of us will be getting immensely benefited. So I request now the speaker, Martka Durek Murtka, to deliver her speech. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear respected scientists, thank you very much for this short introduction about my research, about me. So I would like to share my screen. Please let me know if it's visible. Yeah, it is visible. Yes, great. So I'm from the Lukasiewicz Research Network, the Institute for Sustainable Technologies, which is located in Radom in Poland. What is very interesting, because two years ago, I was in India and met my friends from Indian Institute of Technology in Danbad. I met some colleges like in Chai Baza Engineering College, Ramgar Engineering College, or Dumka Engineering College. So this time was very fruitful for me. And I hope next time I will meet you personally. Today, I would like to saying some words about my institute, what we are doing, what are our research and the laboratory equipment, the structure of Institute for Sustainable Technology. And next, I will show you the research work which we made in our institute related to new technologies. And next, I would say some words about the industrial scenario of electromobility and conclude this webinar. So the Lukasiewicz Research Network provides business solutions in the field of automation, chemicals, biomedicine, ACT, materials, and advanced manufacturing. With approximately 8,000 staff and 26 research institutes located in 12 cities across Poland, it is a third largest research network in Europe. So we are the part of the scientific community who work to promote business and support the development of Polish companies and maybe soon the international companies. So operating in line with the science is business model. We network with business owners and offer solutions designed to help them enhance business operations and build game changing technologies. So, Łukasiewicz is a realiz uh, realization of Poland's aspiration to work with European and global leaders. With the Łukasiewicz network, we have taken uh, research to an entirely new global level, increasing the changes of our uh, companies to secure international grants and acquire foreign business partners. So, Fortunately, here we are not have a didactic um, didactic. We are mainly working with industrial companies. 
So this is a, like a research institute. This is very interesting because when the Lukasiewicz Research Network was established to follow the shortest path from science to business, namely the path denoting the least effort by a business applying for support from the scientific community at the shortest possible time for the scientific community to respond to the challenges faced by the business community. So in business, uh, time is frequently of crucial significance for the success of an undertaking. That is why Lukasiewicz operates in such a manner so as to minimize the capital expenditures of a business while maximizing the prospective benefits from research and development cooperation. So this Lukasiewicz <laughs> challenges are a manifestation of this approach. This is a unique system of initiating research and development work that has been in place since November 2019. It has uh, brought together a group of approximately 4,500 scientists and engineers who within a term of 15 day business days accept a company's business challenge and offer to develop an effective implementation idea and at the end is a success. So some words about my institute because I told about uh, the whole research uh, network. So the Institute for Sustainable Technologies for 55 years already has been specializing in building up innovation performance in the areas of machine construction and maintenance and technical and environmental safety. Additional areas of the Institute activity include model solutions in the field of technology transfer and continuing vocational education, which are the foundation of the European strategy. So here you, on this picture, this is my Institute where I work every day uh, located in the center of Poland in Radon between the Warsaw and Krakow. There are several departments or the centers which are part of the Institute, among other surface engineering center, a tribology center, uh, bioeconomy and eco innovation center, research center for vocational education, innovation, innovation management, and the last one, the prototyping center, which includes these departments like construction prototypes, optomechatronics, control system, control system laboratory, where I work every day, and both departments, and first commissioning laboratory. The first one, the Surfake Engineering Department, is concentrated on the realization of research and application tasks in the field of surface engineering processes of increasing the durability of tools and machine parts by means of plasma chemical methods in particular. And these results of scientific activities undertaken include advanced technologies of surface treatment, enabling the modification of surface layer at the material in order to give it desirable functional and operational properties. And here we have some unique devices which was made in the Department of Surface Engineering, like electron beam plasma device, large scale size arc plasma device or electron beam plasma device. And here you can see where these projects have been implemented in different companies, mainly located in Poland. The another department, the Tribology Center, compromises, compromises the problems of friction, wear and lubricating of machine components with particular attention paid to research method and test devices. So the main directions of research conducted at these departments include, for example, the scientific investigation of friction and where processes in micro, micro and nanoscale or development of methods facilitate tribological 
excuse me, uh, properties of machine elements or other devices which will enable to this project process. In Optum Metroactron is the R&D team and the implementation activities undertaken uh, at this department concern the area of advanced mechatronic and optomechatronic technologies for industrial and scientific application. As you can see here, from development of design methodology and implementation of optomechatronic system, hybrid optic imaging methods, 3D imaging methods, and others. And the department main research direction are advanced method of system of multi-parameter quality inspection in the industry by means of optomechatronic methods or hybrid monitoring system for technological processes in which option optical inspection and thermovision methods are used or manipulators and robotic systems, as you can see in these features. And implementation the dynamically developing this laboratory is equipped with unique advanced test stands and high quality tests and research apparatus which are necessary for execution of undertaken research products like as you see here and the next department uh, in the Bioeconomy and Eco Innovation Center concerns particularly the development and improvement of innovative industrial technology, namely both of the reduction of material and power consumption in manufacturing processes and the management of waste that would minimize the possibility, the possible environmentally harmful aspects of its disposal. So here we have different projects related to this field of science. So research tasks undertaken in these centers include laboratory analysis conducted with the use of specialist analytical apparatus for testing spectral and chromatographic, as well as physical chemical properties of operating fluids and they are mainly concentrated on systems for the reduction of a negative impact of manufacturing and maintenance processes on the environment, or production implication of ecological energy carriers, polymer composite based machine regeneration, as well as energy generating application of operational and maintenance waste materials as substitute fuels. And the results of the statutory scientific activity of the Institute are composed of innovative technologies, novel devices, systems, mechanisms, processes, and original methods that are practically implemented at numerous national and international scientific R&D, civic and governmental and industrial centers or institutions. Practical industrial application of both unique and mass solutions concern all industrial branches, but are mainly concentrated in machine, metallurgical, automotive, textile, chemical, and construction industries. For example, uh, here we can see the system which is intended to, to the realizer in experimental tests, which enabled the simulation and reconstruction of the collision of the structural elements of aircrafts with birds or other subject objects with similar mass and geometry. So we made also the test and research apparatus. As you can see on these features, like uh, for example, salt chamber, a chamber for gas detector tests, or testing the weapon resistance to the effect of dust uh, of dusty air and this is important question is there a production line with a qualified well-trained technical personnel <laughs> no it is not possible in today automated assembly plant or company one of the in 
dispensable elements of a properly functioning assembly line with the shortest possible downtime are the automation speci specialists. The trouble of reproduction depends on their skills, experience, knowledge, among other things. The modern education training systems allow not only to acquire theoretical knowledge, but also practical skills. This is done thanks to various types of training positions in the <laughs> industrial automation laboratories like that, which you see here. And it was made almost training uh, devices and labor stands are made in our institute. So here you can see some examples of devices which was made in my department, in the Department of Control Systems, like a chemical reactor for microwave hydrothermal synthesis of nanopowders or device for sintering powders using the both plasma sintering method or many others, we are mainly focused on the um, control and autom systems and automation in some technological lines or devices. So, some words about the projects is we are focusing in my department, especially in the one, this is a prototype system for continuous recovery of waste heat from the industrial installation. So we are looking for any companies from the heating, metal, metallurgical, or electric industries, or also scientific institutions which would like to cooperate with us in preparing and later implementing a system for continuous recovery of waste heat from the industrial installation, like in glass works, cement plants, and others. We want to obtain the maximum value of the electric current power from the heat flux under the conditions of energy balance in the system and provide high temperature heat energy to the hot side of the thermoelectric generator, taking into account the compensation of uneven temperature distribution on the surface of the waste heat source and maintaining the nominal operating temperature of the thermoelectric generator. Because we're our work is focusing how to use and improve the efficiency of using the thermoelectric generators in our systems. We elaborated, elaborated some parts in this system like a heat exchanger, because this is important question nowadays, how to manage waste heat energy. So the thermoelectric generators can answer this problem. Uh, the thermoelectric modules are used to directly convert thermal energy into electricity and their construction does not require any moving parts and working fluids. They start up immediately. They can work in any position and don't, they don't need any spare parts in man maintenance. And what is important, they have a long service life approximately 20, 30 years. And they work in a wide temperature range. It has been proved that the supply of higher thermal energy to the thermoelectric generators results in higher conversion efficiency and the amount of recovered electricity. And the technological progress and the lowering prices mean that it is economically and technically justified to use thermoelectric generators for generating electricity, even from low temperature heat. So I hope that you know what is the thermoelectric generator, so I don't uh, want to speak more about this and tell more about the heat exchanger. And here in our laboratory, we made the heat exchanger, which consists of four aluminum sheets, as you see on these figures, which has uh, 20 thermoelectric modules between the top, the top and bottom two sheets in between here. You can see it on the, oh, it is between. So, we use this type of thermoelectric generators. 
So to generate the electric, electrical engineering in the order of kilowatt hours, a large number of thermoelectric generators connected to each other, as you saw before, uh, should be used. So waste heat is supplied to the hot poles of the thermoelectric generators group, while the cold poles give the unused part of the heat at the environment. As a result, a result of the temperature difference, this temperature difference, the resultant voltage is created. So the generated DC electric, DC electric energy is converted into AC in the DC AC converter. At the output of this inverter, one should make an alternative voltage at 50 Hertz and constant value of voltage at the level of 230 volts. So permissible deviations is amount to plus minus 10%. So from 205 volts to 255, 53 volts. And the structure and operation principle of the DCAC converter shows that the higher the voltage at the input, the higher the ability to maintain a given voltage at the output, regardless of the power change of the energy supply source. I would like to show the construction of DC, DC AC converted at the next slides. And the generated power edge was transferred to this converter, which is designed and made in the, my department and it has the minimum power of 10 kilowatts. In the inverter, the maximum power point tracking algorithm has implemented. And we use the perturbation observe method uh, applied in this converter. So I will show you the algorithm on the next slide. The converter consists in forced changes in the operating havoc of thermoelectric generators and the observation of power changes. And the current changes should be continued in the same direction, increase or decrease if the change increases the power. And however, if the power decreases, the direction of changes in the work current should also be changed. So if the current was increase, start reducing it, and when it was reduced, start to increase it until the maximum power point is reached. So this feature shows the volt, this feature shows the voltage and direct current waveforms generated by thermoelectric generators connected in series as well as the voltage and alternative current waveforms with frequency 50 Hertz at the output of the DCAC converter. And this is the schema of perturbation and observe method. You can see the algorithm here. So the maximum amount, power amount, approximately 80 watts is available at the temperature difference 75 degrees. So under thermal, there's a thermal conditions, the maximum power point tracking algorithm set at operating current, uh, approximately 2.4 amps. And at the temperature difference at 60 degree, and the maximum power point is for 2.1 amps. And at the output, there is a uh, approximately 65 watts of power available. And the difference is due to the losses in the DC-AC conversion circuit. And these systems, of course, need minimal energy for correct, correct operation below, which is which it will not generate AC current while maintaining the voltage value at uh, 250 volts. So here we can see the resistance station, which has a modular structure which enables its rapid modification and further development through the use of various low temperature head sources, different cooling systems, and thermoelectric generators. And the basic elements of the station 
are the models which allow the storage and exchange of high temperature thermal energy. You can see here, heat exchangers of hot site, um, hot site and cold site, and set of thermal electric generators, it is between here. And further models of the research station are DC AC converter here, a storage model with a high thermal parameters, this one, uh, a storage model with low thermal parameters and control system module. And this is a PC computer. High temperature heat exchange module and this one and uh, low temperature heat exchange module can be added to the system if necessary. It can be action addition of modules. And here this video presents the simple schema of the and this construction of the research station in our lab. And storage and heat exchange models with a high and low temperature parameters were developed as a cylindrical tanks, as you see here. Uh, with a capacity equal to 800 decimeters, cubic decimeters, and a spiral coil placed inside here, uh, and the hot is hot, and this is cold, which has a heat transfer area of three meters square. And the coils forbid direct contact of liquids in the exchangers, hence, the possibility of using liquid with different freezing and evaporation temperatures is possible. Consequently, it can be used to extract heat from sources with different temperatures. And the maximum temperature for heating the liquid in the tank is set at approximately uh, or rather at uh, 95 degrees for water, which stores the heat energy why the minimum temperature for cooling the liquid is at four degrees. Similarly, the storage and heat exchange modules with low thermal parameters are adapted to cooperate with different heat, heat collection systems. An example of which is dry or wet cooling tower, fanless cooling tower, or an adsorption aggregate. So tests confirmed the correctness of the operation of the system and the ability to generate electricity as a result of the temperature difference between the covers of the thermal electric generators. So the research station can be used to verify operational low power systems that use a small number of thermoelectric generators in which the output product is only TC. And the presented solution also enables the conversion of thermal energy from the waste heat sources with unstable parameters to thermal energy with utility parameters. And the station presented here can be used to dissipate thermal energy in different modules during a nature fall in temperature at night. As a result, a significant reduction in electricity consumption may be achieved. So now we are still working on it and improve the all parameters of these systems. All right. And here you can see our papers, which is related about the waste heat recovery with the use of thermal electric generator. And here it is described at the research station, as I showed you before. It is, um, you can find it in Journal of Machine Construction. It is available online. And the second one is titled Analysis of the Parameters to Section Hot Site Heat Exchangers of the Module with Thermoelectric Generators. It uh, was published in Energies and also available online in last year. And the second interesting project is what is we're working on it, is related to hydrogen production and storage. But I won't talk more about it because uh, there is in progress, we still agree with other consortium, consortium partners and uh, probably, well, let's see what will be in the future, close future. 
So the aim of this project is to develop for our site a water preparation system for appropriate quality intended to power the electrolyzer and the hydrogen storage system. And the primary source will be water required in a hydrogen fuel cell, but it can also be tap water or waste water of various compositions, especially in the case of hydrogen storage installation with generated electricity. So it is assumed that a multi-stage water purification system will be built in which each module will be responsible for the removal of individual pollutants. A concept for the energy part of the laboratory hydrogen installation will be developed, including the following systems such as receiving hydrogen from the electrolyzer, compressing storage hydrogen, generating electricity using a fuel cell and others because it is still in progress. This is our conception of this system called Hydrogen Valley. It can be small and large scale. And here you see, but with our institute, my department will be focused mainly to elaborate this module, the water preparation system, which is the electrolyzer and another consortium partners uh, system of uh, um, conversion and uh, storage, hydrogen, and also distribution system to, for example, industrial installations or only uh, storage. The optional uh, modules are oxygen, oxygen storage and distribution systems. So we Focus on that because it is in but nowadays it is very important because we have a lot of power, uh, photovoltaic installation which cannot be connected to the power supply systems and how to use them. This is a one hour concept that we can generate hydrogen and convert it to also to electricity by uh, create a hydrogen volley on large or small scale. So let's focus mainly on the electromobility this time because it recently it was my research also in the PhD thesis. And now I'm continuing this topic. So I can say that nowadays there's no real alternative to significant reduction of the harmful effects of traditional transport, which is based on the use of combustion vehicles, than the rapid acceleration of the use of electric vehicles for the transport of goods and people. And they use the renewable energy to power the fast charging station for electric autonomic work machines and transport means is also particularly important. So electromobility has been developed at a phase pace in recent years. This applies to both means of collecting car transport, motor vehicles for the transport of goods, as well as the vehicles for individual use, for me or for you. I would like to <laughs> buy an electric car and every day go to my work with any cost, only the cost of electricity, which was uh, obtained by using uh, renewable energy sources. So this is the result of an attempt to reduce air pollution and carbon dioxide emissions. A large and rapid increase in sales of electric vehicle vehicles is forecast in the following years. And battery mobile work machines are already used in industry. On the left, you can see the uh, mining ag electric aggregate convenor. And on the right, you can see the one type of the transportation machine used in the uh, aviation. It's an aircraft tractor. Yes, they are electric. And the lack of proper charging infrastructure for, for electric vehicles is still a problem, which makes it difficult to own an electric vehicle enabled on long intercity roads. But the use of photovoltaic installations and wind turbines and also other sources like hmm, nuclear 
here is a future solution enabling the production of energy for charging stations and currently the focus should be on the construction of electric vehicle charging infrastructure at reloading and parking sites for company vehicles because i uh, focus i focus only on the industry and uh, companies why because there is a solution which is until now wasn't presented in any literature so i will tell you more about it on the next slides public car parks at expressway and highways are often require large investments outlays to provide a pro power network adapted to supply half power when charging vehicle batteries for example 300 kilowatts or more the situation is different in industrialized regions where an extensive industrial power grid provides industrial electric drives with high powers for daily production but first is some words about batteries used in electric vehicles but here i'm only mainly focused on the uh, autonomous work machines electric autonomous work machines not only like not electric vehicles like for me or for you so lithium-ion battery is the most using type cows offer a serious advantages for example low self discharge no memory effect greater energy to weight ratio and etc. The electric vehicle charger is supplied with grid voltage and absorbs uh, current during charging. On the battery side, I mean here, uh, is it this voltage is a terminal voltage, and this is a current absorbed by the battery. And these parameters this and this one indicate the equivalent voltage and resistance of the electric vehicle battery respectively and the figure on the right presents the simple model of the battery set which could be used mainly in the autonomous electric bulb machines or energy storages also and by connecting four chains of 100 cells in parallel the final battle set with a parameters or uh, 800 amps per hour and voltage of two, 320 is good, which gives the power to uh, 256 kilowatts per hour. And according to it, the DC-DC converter with a minimal power of so approximately 262 kilowatts should be used to charge this battery set in one hour with one C current or with a power nearly uh, 800 kilowatts to charge the battery in about 20 minutes with triple current charging an electric vehicle battery with this current depends on its cooling capability as the losses during charging increase three times so during continuous operation and while charging the battery its temperature might not exceed uh, more than six, 65 degrees. And during the charging electric vehicle batteries, several different strategies and physical implementation have been employed. And the battery charging strategy is related to the shapes and magnitudes of the current and voltages uh, to be used during charging, while the physical implementation of the battery changing infrastructure means how to energy is transferred to the electric vehicle physically, for example, using inductive charging instruction or traditional. So we can distinguish a strategy of constant voltage charging, constant current charging, combination of these two strategies or pulse charging or negative pulse charging, and which we the last one was originally developed to enhance the efficiency of charging converters for lead acid batteries and the constant current charging strategy is to provide a constant current to charge the battery to eight percent of the battery state of charge and alternative strategy is shown on this figure it extends 
the charging time but 50 50 percent would but reduce the charging temperature of the battery and the rest of them uh, in this level uh, of the 80 10 uh, 100 percent charging is carried on by attached nominal power but a revoltage uh, for example 320 volts dc current for uh, 100 cell lithium-ion batteries connected in series so in this range the charging current disappears as you see here and the battery is considered to be fully charged when the charging current drops from three to five percent and both strategies can be implemented by a converter using drive frequency converter yes in our work i'll use not the typical construction of DC 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 converter but I use the drive voltage frequency converter so fast battery charging systems should be integrated with industrial power networks in such a way as not to increase the electricity demand of the power system and this can be achieved by using additional energy, energy sources and energy storage. And this is a model with a smart transformer with an energy storage. And solar plant is shown on the left and on the right, it is a ground electrical switchboard that connects the energy storage and renewable energy sources to the power system. And these systems, as you see here, and uh, it's just implemented in Polish enterprises and also abroad enterprises. And search for a solution to the problem of electric vehicle batteries charging with electricity obtained without the participation of solid, liquid, or gaseous fuels was the subject of research carried out in my PhD thesis. And the basic assumptions here is not to use conventionally obtained electricity based on the combustion of fuels. And the electric vehicle battery charging energy is to be obtained from renewable energy sources. And to meet this assumption, I propose a hybrid electric vehicle fast charging station. In addition to uh, renewable energy generators, the station uses also energy storage. And the work of the electric vehicle uh, fast charging station is controlled by and monitored by available AT tools. But I mm, didn't tell more about it. It is another topic of this research. And then additional important feature of this charging station it is beneficial effect on the power system through use the use of this microgrid as you can see here here this microgrid and filters improving the energy quality indicators of the power system energy produced and stored in electric vehicle fast charging stations additionally increase clean energy resources in the power system acting as distributing source of the power of the renewable energy system and the industry is ready to significantly increase the use of renewable energy to power drive converters and use them uh, to charge the electric vehicle battery so this presented solutions. I mean, the DC micro with an IC grid, the power of battery chargers is a derivative of the power of the drive power of frequency converters and can reach two megawatts in industrial low voltage networks. Usually a low voltage AC grid is used to charge the batteries of electric vehicles. An example of network you see on this Feature. I analyzed a possibility of using a low voltage DC microgrid as it can be connected directly to the power supply of intermediate circuits of frequency converter, which are commonly used in the industry. 
So hybrid microgrids of this evolved provide the possibility of tiny additional energy. Figure on the right and shows the local 600 volts DC microgrid attached to intermediate circuits uh, of voltage frequency converters and the ability to use a dry voltage frequency converter as a converter for fast battery charging is the main purpose. Uh, they can power drive sets in which some of them work as generators. And this figure shows a multi-engine power set in which one of the engine in, is an energy generator. It's a typical load sharing drive application. For example, if you can uh, show the Danfoss company products, it is a typical solution in their products. So each voltage frequency converter supplies normal power to a motor via the IC supply line. If one or more motors are driven into regenerative mode, they deliver power to the common DC bus. And this power is then used by other frequency converter. And in this way, the installation is more economical because in many situations, brake resistance can be omitted. So in this fifth situation, the DC voltage can be slightly different in each converter. But this is due to minor differences in the rectifiers, different temperature, out power, and similar. But the small difference in DC voltage makes it necessary to use small line reactors in AC mine supply and fuses in DC grid, in bus, in DC bus. And a large number of frequency converters located in a various places in the enterprise enables the location of electric vehicle battery charging points as close as possible to places of use the autonomous electric bulb machines and various types of electric vehicles. Currently, all drives in which the engine speed is regulated use indirect AC-DC AC converters. So on the following slides, I will present the properties of the DC DC converter, but only short and yeah, lives in the operation of the hybrid DC microgrid power supply system because it's a typical structure as you should be. At this slide, I use the typical construction, uh, the typical convert DC DC converters here. Uh, and here you can see the boost type of DC DC converter which can be in third phase and array of PV panels. And the second one is a bidirectional back bus DC DC converter used in electric vehicle charging station. And here you can see the localization of these converters in the proposed structure of fast charging station. And the next one uh, is a um, how to enable the transmission of excess energy from the DC microgrid or supply the energy from the AC grid? I use the active front end inverter with the structure as we shown below with an LCL filter. It can be made, for example, Schneider Electric Company. And the principle of operation of this inverter for the rectifier and recuperative operation mode has been presented on a single phase simulation models in which the direction of energy flow is realized by the phase shift angle between the voltage generated by the inverter and the voltage of the sup power supply network. And here you can see the rectifier and regenerative, regenerative mode of this type inverter. And here you can see the uh, the structure of LCL filter. It is a filter. The filter acts as limitation of the content of high frequency disturbances produced by active front and inverter. For example, the differential mode and common mode voltage, which are suppressed here. And there's a formula to determine the values of the filter parameters. Is a typical. And the use the filters enables the power system to be supplied both phase and phase to phase sinusoidal voltage. It is necessary to use this filter at the 
inverter output due to the inverted signal, which contains harmonic as the switching frequency in its multipliers. And here you can see the model of uh, for simulation research of cooperation, the PWM voltage inverter with the input rectifier of frequency contained, but in AC grid. Uh, it is another structure, but uh, I analyzed it also in my research, but I mainly focus on the DC grid. And here I'll build this model and apply the inverter differential mode voltage, the common mode voltage filters here. Here is a um, uh, PWM control. And here you can see the filter of the fifth, seven, and 11 harmonics. In the studio of this model, I demonstrated only the possibility of supplying a diode rectifier from a drive converter without the use of transforming galvanic isolation, as is typical in the other structures. And here it is a suppression of different ammo and common bond voltage with LCL filter. And this feature on the left shows the inverter face-to-face -face voltage after filtering out the inverted differential voltage harmonics. This is another problem which is uh, in this type of structure, but I want to tell more about it because it is another type of also research, because my work contains of other different small researches, but I would like to go to main uh, structure or which I considered in my research. And here also is this um, location of the filter, which is shown on this feature uh, of the resonant filter. And I would like to go next. It is a simulation test of the effectiveness and suppression of current harmonics by this type of filter, resonant filter of fifth, seven, and 11 harmonics. And the next one is an experimental test of the effectiveness and suppression of current harmonics by the resonant filter in the AC grid. And the next one is where I focused mainly on this. It is a new type of converter for fast electric vehicle battery charging. I developed it to use a voltage inverter of drive frequency converter. And this is a solution that has never been seen in the world literature so far. But now it is because <laughs> I published some papers about it. And the simulation test uh, carried out confirmed the possibility of using the proposed solution to generate direct current to charge an electric vehicle battery according to a strategy that consists in maintaining to set values of direct current during battery charging and usually it is heavily current or tripled heavily current in the range of from 20 to 80 percent state of charge battery and when charging a lithium-ion battery in this range the voltage on a single cell increased by 0.2 volt which results from the data sheets of the battery manufacturer so it is okay and to confirm the results obtained in the computer simulation test i built a laboratory stand in which i used two drive frequency converters the first converter powered from the AC network generates a three phase voltage with constant parameters and voltage of in three lines, three phases, uh, 400 volts at frequency 50 Hertz. And this reflects the power supply to the re receivers from the photovoltaic converter without the use of transformer galvanic isolation. And the second drive inverter with a diode output rectifier reflects an ICDC converter in which the voltage of the rectifier is controlled by the value of three-phase voltage produced by inverter of this drive converter. 
Uh, by using drive converters, a console battery charging can, can be ensured. And the battery charging voltage here is given by the resistance value of the power resistor. Mm, I can see here. And this feature is a complex laboratory stand for testing operation of PWM voltage inverter with the rectifier of electric Vico fast charging station. And the converter used in the test stand didn't allow the use of frequencies in the range of 50 hertz, 50 hundred hertz till 1000 hertz, one kilohertz, as in that case with other types of these converters. And the maximum frequency was 300 hertz. It is, uh, which is a six fold increase in the basic harmonic frequency of the inverter voltage compared to the industrial grid uh, voltage frequency. So, this is a DC converter using a drive frequency converter with a six diode rectifier connected to the PWM inverter was built, and it is shown in this figure. In the laboratory stand, the possibility of controlling the voltage of the equipment resistive load of the rectifier was tested in such a way as to ensure a constant current flowing through via the substitute power resistor because I have only this, not battery. And the rectifier load current was stabilized by the use of software built in function of limiting the inverter current of the drive converter to a given value the current limit it called. And the value of the maximum phase current of the inverter with the value of two amps has been programmed at the beginning. It was two amps and it can be more. And the power balance of the inverter and the rectifier shows that the maximum rectification current will be then approximately two amps too. And the basic harmonic frequency of the inverter phase to phase voltage rectifier in the free phase diode rectifier is approximately 100 Hertz. To use of a specially shaped characteristic of the phase to phase voltage waveform as a function of frequency allows, allows to maintain the frequency close to 100 Hertz in the full range from zero volts to five to uh, sorry, uh, 400 volts in the PWM inverter face to face. Uh, in, this is a changes. So the measured values of the rectifier voltage at the load current of the diode rectifier for these assumed values and the load resistance are presented in these diagrams on the right and also shows in this video. And here, feature on the left shows the conceptual model of a grid connected photovoltaic and energy storage system. And this system is intended to be installed at the rooftop areas of commercial buildings. I mean, the PV installation. And the idea is to convert each non dispatchable unit photovoltaic unit to dispatchable one with a combination of photovoltaic and energy storage units to retain the system active of reactive power losses for each load level at the lowest levels. And the combination can produce a daily amount of dispatchable energy. Uh, I mean this, this slide. And here in uh, Two four hour die cycle, the photovoltaic units is generating and this amount of energy. A portion of this energy is delivered to the grid, and the redundant energy of the photovoltaic unit is used to charge the electric, uh, the energy storage. Discharging, it is charging. Uh, rather than curtailing it when the photovoltaic output is high during the day, and this storage energy is then discharging to the grid, as you see in these two aspects. 
And mainly when the photovoltaic output is small or zero during the night, especially. And these units, photovoltaic and energy storage, are placed in the same location to avoid grid energy losses during the charge of the energy storage unit. In generalizing, the total output power balance equation of the main components can be described as a power model. And this equation presents the renewable energy sources capacity in time period, for example, in one year. And figure on the right, maybe not this, <laughs> I mean this, uh, shows the quarterly energy production of roof to photovoltaic plant on a sunny day, taking into account storing energy in the storage and delivering into loads connected to the DC microgrid or the AC grid. And the actual annual energy production of this photovoltaic installation is six megawatt per hour. Because it has uh, real data from one installation, which is located in the central part of Poland, I mean in my city in Radom. And it has a uh, power of six kilowatt in peak. So it is very fantastic. Thanks to this small photovoltaic installation, over the indicated period, it was possible to reduce over 22 tons uh, of carbon dioxide, and which is also reflected in the planting over 260 trees. If I would like to have an electric vehicle, uh, vehicle, the energy produced meets, meets the energy demand for this electric vehicle. And the expression below shows that the maximum energy should be provided by renewable energy sources during the year for charging electric vehicle batteries, and it should be not less than energy required for electric uh, vehicle charging stations. In order to integrate the electric vehicle charging station with power system, there should be provided suitable selection of the topology of local system supplying infrastructure of the station and taking into account its stages of expansion in order to ensure charging of electric vehicle batteries with renewable energy. And the annual balance sheet demands for renewable energy may be used here. And the topology can inc include this mainly a local DC voltage renewable energy plant, for example, photovoltaic plant or wind turbines, and energy storage as a lithium ion battery, or it can be another type of battery. But the lithium ion is the best for this application. And this, because it characterized by the ability to fast deliver high power energy to the local DC microgrid. And dry voltage frequency converter equipped with six pool diode rectifier units is used as charging converter. Low voltage frequency converters, depending on the production specificity in the industrial plant, might have capacities up to approximately, I mean, a power, uh, approximately two megawatts. And their usage to charge electric vehicle batteries doesn't require the expansion of the company power supply network and doesn't increase the maximal power demand of enterprise of this company. And the hybrid electric vehicle charging station power supply system can be developed in these stages. So first one is the adaptation of dry voltage sequence converting uh, to the battery charging function through the use of rectify unit. The second one is a construction of a photovoltaic installation with annual production capacity for renewable energy for charging electric vehicle batteries. And the DC micro B can be uh, also in, as an energy storage because uh, equipping the charging station with, with the charging such power supply, I mean, with energy storings for the purposes of supporting the supply of industrial rice during short interruptions in energy supply from the industrial 
power systems. So if the local grid is able to use all energy from renewable energy sources for the production processes, then is balanced terms, it's a natural renewable energy storage for electric vehicles in that case. And the third one is to use an active front and inverter from transmitting renewable energy from the DC line to the AC line in order to introduce it to power system. If in the peak load hours, uh, it's needed to improve the energy quality indicators in this IC line. And the most important is the selection of type and nominal parameters of charger using the right frequency converters and other necessary power converters depending on the topology of local charging station power supply system and determining the number and location of points for simultaneous charging of company electric vehicle, vehicles and the parent. So then the algorithm and software of PLC controller implementing selected strategies of battery charging, including maximizing the use of renewable energy and loading the power system at peak loads for improving energy quality parameters in the industrial networks can be elaborated, uh, should be elaborated. So to sum up, nevertheless, the local hybrid electric vehicle battery charging system has significant environmental benefits and supports the power system during peak load hours, ensuring renewable energy production at the local industrial plant at the level of electric uh, vehicle demand doesn't require, increase the demand for energy, system energy, whose transmission costs are very significant, in particular while, while developing distribution lines. So the use of microgrids provide the opportunity to integrate a hybrid power supply system for electric vehicle charging station in such a way that the battery charging energy doesn't increase the load on the power system. In, in addition, it is possible to improve the power quality indicators in the power system by attaching a rectifier to the drive voltage frequency converter instead of the induct motor. So then it is possible to create DC AC DC converter for charging electric vehicle batteries and the use of low voltage drive converters to create the inverter for the converter for fast charging batteries doesn't require expansion of the industrial uh, power supply system and because uh, when the electric vehicle battery is planned to be charged instead of motor load, the battery load is being replaced. It can be a multifunctional tasks of this type of converter. And the power of this type of converters can reach two megawatts. A widespread occurrence of dry voltage converters prompt me to modify them for needs of fast and ultra fast charging station of electric vehicle batteries. So the results obtained in this project still, this project is still continuing. I've also uncovered topics that give me motivation for further research. For example, and this is a possibility of using transport, uh, heavy transport, electric vehicles with capacity more than uh, 300 kilowatts per hour as a temporary energy storage using supporting DC microgrid supply by using bidirectional DC DC converters for battery charging. I would like to uh, analyze the possibility of cooperation active filters and resonant parallel passive filters. This may allow the use of lower power active filters if the fifth, seven, and eleventh carbonics will significantly be filtered by passive filters. And the, um, the main problem is that we need to create an algorithm for renewable energy management in a hybrid power supply system of DC microgrid, for example, based on measurements of dry voltage frequency converters, currents, supplying motors of converters for fast charging <clears throat> of battery vehicles, 
using artificial intelligence or like example machine learning methods. So the most important is to develop and implement the AC-DC converter and that means voltage frequency converter and at the out connected to the output of inverters this drive con frequency converter the rectifier six pole diode rectifier for fast battery charging which could be used alternate alternatively as you see on this figure for motor drive or electric vehicle battery charging and then this project which i told you before I showed the, the hydrogen while it will be con elaborated in our department and in the near future. So let's see what will be uh, the next step in our research work. If you would like to know more about my research and my team research work, please look at this paper's thesis was published in Microsystem Technologies, and the second one is Energies. Uh, it was published last year, and we are in progress of our other papers. Thank you very much. It was a very good opportunity to show you my recent um, works related to the electromobility and other new technologies which are developed in my institute. And we are also focusing on other types of projects. Thank you very much. I hope that next time we will uh, meet personally in your institute in India. Thank you, Dr. Marta. Thank you very much. It was, a, it was an extremely nice presentation with a lot of inputs. There are, few, there are some technical questions. If you can answer three to four, Actually, most of the questions are from one person only. Oh. Shall I read out the question? Shall I read out the question or you can see? <laughs> I see. I see. Now I see the questions. Yeah, and yeah. Some of the questions you can answer. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the temperature difference created by industrial waste. Temperature difference. I thought about this because we obtained the temperature decrease approximately um, 70 degrees between the cold side of heat exchanger and hot side exchanger, uh, 70, 80 degrees. And the industrial waste, it depends on the industrial installation. It can be a low temperature as on the level of few degrees or more 30 degrees approximately. And this depends on the industrial applications. And the amount of energy in kilowatts generated, amount of the energy I I hope, I think I thought about this in kilowatts, but maybe not kilowatts because on the output of them, if you mean the uh, this AC converter made in my department, we have the output of this, uh, the power of this converter 10 kilowatts, but I don't uh, remember how much exactly. If I, if you could me, allow me to check, I will answer for all these questions. Uh, and sent to the conference secretary to distribute you. And the next one is renewable energy superior, superior than traditional methods of energy generation. Hmm. I quite don't understand this question, energy superior. It depends on which application, if you mean the new technologies in the waste recovery system or another one. I will think about it. Colbert, is your thermoelectric generator deploy, deployed in coal-based plants? Hmm. Geothermal. I mean the geothermal applications so it can be it is possible but mainly be focusing on the glass works when we have a lot of waste heat here for example in magazine of uh, products hot products or in the um, another processes which use the uh, how to say in other technological processes, in uh, metallurgical industrial plants. 
cost effective compared to coal based power plant. Uh, we didn't compare it yet because it is in still progress. But it is cost effective? No, I suppose that it's not cost effective because it, when I go to the, uh, maybe I will return to the one slide where we have the installation. Oh, because I have many slides. This. No moving parts. And it is. Uh, decrease the costs. Work in any position. It is. It can be modified. Long service life. So it also decreases the cost of uh, changing the, some components like thermodelectric generators, which uh, can mm, work by twenty or thirty years. Maintenance free operation with spare parts and maintenance because it can be an autonomous system. And refrigerant is water, so it is economy an environmentally friendly system. And does electric battery storage problem is solved over time? <laughs> battery energy is problem. Uh, the problem is mainly in the type of the battery because some parts like uh, anode, uh, anode and cathode uh, can be, um, how to say, uh, can work uh, not more than a few years or, or more. And it is, there are some works about it. So you can find many works related to the battery storage, and connection with hybrid battery storage with capacity per capacitors and other types to improve the efficiency of the system. Those in the climatic conditions affect performance of thermoelectric generators. I suppose that yes, uh, the Indian climatic conditions can be uh, good for implement uh, this type of uh, system the, to waste heat conversion. What is SOTS? <laughs> State of the charge of battery. Can we alter public energy systems for lower, low power conversion? Is this risk justified for compromising power quality? Low power conversions. Hmm. If you mean the waste heat recovery system, it doesn't affect on the power system. But if you mean the uh, recent, my recent, recent research about the electromobility, everything it depends of using the type of filters uh, between the connection of DC microgrid and AC grid. How fast does your charger charges every? Electric vehicle compares with traditional one. At this moment, everything it depends on the battery because it can be fast, really. If we use two megawatts <laughs> charging station, it can be in one minute or less. Because the problem is with still with the battery, because the temperature cannot be more than 65 uh, degrees. This is a data sheet on the producer. And the research scientist is still elaborating of new type of battery storages. But I think it is only this problem because on the grid problem, there is no problem because we have microgrid filters and converters and connected to the IC line. And the next one is, does thermal generator produce electromobility dependently? Electricity, independently, depends, because <laughs> I don't understand these questions, but thermogenetic and thermoelectric generator can be used in different types of, for example, in uh, different application. If you mean the electromobility, you can find some work about using the 
thermoelectric generators in how to say. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, madam. See, I feel a lot of questions has been answered. Yes, in few. Okay, there in are few there. Few. Okay, we can we can stop stop now. And uh, if there are some if there are some more questions that we can discuss in the internally. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I will copy it. these questions yeah. because there is very interesting and interesting it's fantastic that, original thinking that <laughs> has come that from students the are interesting on this topic and I will answer for these questions uh, in details and uh, yes yes you. yes then that will be that will be nice so let me just summarize it was a very interesting yes. lecture with the with all recent activity and uh, a lot of interesting works are being going on and uh, those works are mostly required for our country and yes. they have implemented several systems in their in university your university and all are multidisciplinary work that's why it has come to a success especially we are very much interested I mean we have seen that okay wasted recovery and thermoelectric generation is a new topic a lot of works are going on in this as an alternative energy source. And most interesting thing what she has covered is the fast charging hybrid electric vehicle, fast charging scheme. She has explained two types of grid. One is the AC grid and DC micro grid, and as well as bidirectional bulk boost converter with fifth harmonic, seventh harmonic, 11th harmonic elimination. So that gives a yes. lot of improvement for the application in the electrical machines. And she has also discussed integration of renewable source and energy storage with DC microgrid. And most interesting thing for us is you know, that this technology, it is electric vehicle technology. Okay, it is not only used for tra transport, it is used for the industry. She has given example for a coal mine conveyor, coal cutter. So for many examples, she has given that it is not only used for the human transport, it is also used for the actual industrial use. So that gives us a lot of power saving and consequently a lot of benefit to our nature. So with this, okay, we'll stop today. And it was a very interesting lecture. And I request Dr. Raju Bosak to propose the vote of thanks. Dr. Raju Bosak, she is the yes, only is secretary. Is it audible, sir? Huh? Is it audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, Professor Paul, for giving me the opportunity to propose the vote of thanks. It is actually a great pleasure for me to extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to all the distinguished participants in the technical webinar on the theme, New Technologies and Renewable Energy-Based Electromobility, organized by the Electrical Engineering Division, West Bengal State Center, IEI, through online platform Zoom. At the outset, I convey my sincere thanks to the speaker, Dr. Martha Zuret Morka, scientist Institute of Sustainable and Technologies in Radom in the Department of Control System. Thank you, madam. Personally, from my behalf, uh, many, many thanks to you for, for your wonderful presentation. My sincere thanks also Thank goes you. to Dr. Nirmal Das, Chairman, West Bengal State Center, IEI, Dr. H.O. Thakre, President, the Institution of Engineers India, Engineer Sandeep Kumar Dev, Vice President IEI, Dr. P. K. Mukherjee, Chairman, Electrical Engineering Divisional Committee, West Bengal State Center, IEI, Professor Dr. S. K. Chala, Chairman, Electrical Engineering Division Board, IEI, Dr. G. Ranganath, Chairman, Committee of the Advancement of Technology and Engineering, IEI, Professor Ashok Kumar Pal. I'm very glad to thank him. So, Professor Ashok Kumar Pal, Professor of Electrical Engineering Department, Techno India University, who acted as a moderator of this program. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My vote of thanks also goes to all members of the council and division board, board members of ELDB, all members of the committee, West Bengal State Center, IEI, all members of the Electrical Engineering Divisional Subcommittee, Director Technical IEI, his team, for their wholehearted support to make the program a grand success. Last but not the least, my sincere thanks also goes to all who are behind the screen and giving their silent support to make the program grand success. Thank you. 
thank you all a good night okay thank you all thank you all thank you all so we are closing yes yes thank you okay, okay sir thank you everybody thank you ma'am and thank you sirs so i am closing the webinar here yeah okay okay thank you all thank you very much thank i'm you. glad for meet you and i thank you for the invitation from raju basak it is very nice to meet you again and maybe personally in the uh, yes 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 we should meet personally thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you very much